the company of curlews. Chapter 7 Lover Boy and a White Swan Paint a mild, please, Eva. Just turned 18, she is. Her grandmother, June Fish, once had a run in the pub. Clever girl, my daughter. We're closer than ever now. Do you know I used to call my mother-in-law June Fish? Thought it was her surname. It was only when Di told me that her brother had run the chip shop years ago. Oh, wins they were, posh like. Thank you, sweetheart, I say. She smiles. I take the first sip of the day. Oof, it tastes good. Spring will be here soon, the stars will shine. I'll get a licence again, and me and Uncle Di will go out on the river. Gotta keep it going, see? Good times will come again, and the fish will return. Have you seen Mum, she says. I hadn't seen her for a few months. I'd found a temporary job, good money, when you had it, see? A hard work, mind. I was needed to help out now and again on the scaffolding up in London. All over the country, really. I'd go where the work took me. But the boys, they seem to drink as much as they earn. I need the money. I still got a mortgage to pay. My grandfather told me that his father went up to Liverpool looking for work in the winter. Didn't find any. And the only place he could afford to stay at was in a doss house, where he had to sleep on a rope, hanging across the room. I can't work it out, to be honest, sleeping on a rope. You should go and see her, Eva says. She doesn't work any more. Huh? Is she getting married, then? She doesn't answer me. You should go, she says. She has been feeling very well lately. In my eyes, she'd made her bed. When she left, my pride, my stupidity wouldn't let me say sorry. Instead, I lost my temper, told her to take two minutes to think about what she was doing, to think what she was doing to our family. Ralph Richards made his fortune. Well, his father did. Richards, TVs, radios and all electrical goods. Honest and reliable. <laughs> More like devious and sly. He didn't need fishing no more, never did. If I go and see her now, it's as if I've I've condoned it. He's got her up his big house, probably doing the cleaning and the cooking for him. She had come back that night, six months ago now. Said she believed me. I know you didn't do it, she said. Di told me what happened, but you tripped. I know it was an accident. I'm sorry, she said. Does he know you're here? I ask her. I knew the answer. The grass wasn't greener, was it? She'd crossed the line and I told her, Go back to lover boy. That's what I told her. Go back to lover boy. I told her to go and see her. Why didn't you listen to me? Eva thumped my chest in anger. She wanted to see you. I held her round her back and pulled her close. I didn't know, I said. I stroked her hair for the cold comfort it gave her and took in a lungful of my daughter's scent and all I could sense was my wife of 24 years, a childhood sweetheart, the true love that only drifted away because of my selfishness. In my arms, Eva transformed into Branwen, her hair like silk around her long graceful neck her soft brown eyes pools of kindness and understanding I gently pulled her a little closer and drifted into a dark place of self-pity I asked you not to go I said only I knew the reasons for her unhappiness I won't go Dada don't cry Eva said, with tears flowing down her cheeks. My heart was broken. Branwen, a star on a drizzly night, handsome Branwen, had been taken in her prime. I wanted to hear again the sound of her gentle voice, 
Feel the warmth of her skin on mine, and smell the perfume of wild strawberries and honeysuckle, and look upon the softness of Branwen. Why should anyone ask for more? I closed my eyes, she reappeared, and I cried like that boy who lost his brother by the river so many years ago. I fell asleep, and Branwen came to me.